Well, g'day, Kerr Nerds. Today, we're going to learn how to make Belper Knoll. Well, Belper Knoll is a cream cheese that has been covered in black peppercorn. It also has the inclusion of garlic and some salt as well and uh, that's fresh garlic and it's aged for about four weeks. Now I've aged this one for about two weeks but before we cut into it and have a taste test let me show you how I made Belper Knoll. So I'm using milk by Ingle Nook Dairy. This is pasteurized unhomogenized milk. So the ingredients for this cheese is four liters or one gallon of whole cow's milk an eighth of a teaspoon of Floridanica or Sacco MO36R, an eighth of a teaspoon or 0.75 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, six drops of single strength rennet diluted in one tablespoon of non-chlorinated water, three teaspoons of pink Himalayan salt, three cloves of garlic that have been peeled, and three tablespoons of toasted black peppercorns. Now give your milk a good stir. If it's cream top milk, some of the cream may float to the top. So I'm giving that a good whisk there. And now it's time to add the calcium chloride into the milk. And give that a good stir. This helps the curd to set when you're using a pasteurized milk. Clip your thermometer on and heat the milk up to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to add the starter culture. We're going to sprinkle that all over the top of the milk. And pop the lid on and we are going to allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later we're just going to give that a quick stir and stir that into the milk. Just checking the temperature that was still 30 degrees so that's good. Now we're going to add the rennet straight away without any ripening time. Just pour the rennet in there and give it a good stir for no more than one minute. So cover that up and we're going to allow the milk to set now for 12 to 18 hours. Wouldn't be able to drop that iPad in the milk. Now 18 hours later, I checked at 12, it wasn't quite ready. At 18 hours, the curd had come away from the side of the pot and there was a layer of whey sitting on top of that. That's when you know it is ready to uh, drain the curds. So we're going to ladle the curds now into a butter muslin lined colander. And that butter muslin is a tight weave cheesecloth. So just ladle all of the curds into it. It will drain freely. So just get all of the curds out of the pot as best you can. There we go, every last little bit. And now we're going to grab opposite corners of the cloth and we're going to tie them to form a bag. Now we're going to hang this bag up. How you do that is your choice. I've got a pretty nifty little trick. I'm going to drain that for 18 hours until the curd is firm. So I use a knob on my kitchen cabinet, the overhead cupboard. It just sits over the knob and it drains over the top of a pot, which is nice and simple. So 18 hours later, you can see there's a lot of whey that has been expelled there, which is fantastic. Just what we want. So you just take the bag off the hook. And 
You can do what you want with the whey. And just turn the cheese into the bowl. I'm going to take it out of the bag first though, of course. There we go. Nice and easy, just roll it out like a big ball. Okay, so just break the cheese apart because you're checking for firmness. You don't want any moisture to be in there. It's, it's a fairly firm cheese. And that looks pretty good, that curd. Yep, all good. So there are the ingredients. We've got the black peppercorns, we've got the three cloves of garlic, and we've got the Himalayan salt. Uh, you can use fine Himalayan salt, it's probably preferable. Now just chop the garlic cloves uh, just finely, don't go too over the top because we're going to put them into the mortar and pestle in a minute, which is just there, place them in there. Nice. And we're going to add the salt. So I put one and a half uh, teaspoons to start with, but uh, you will need to add some more salt later. So grind that well into a smooth paste. So using the mortar and pestle. Pestle. There we go, lovely looking paste there. Not much of it, but a little bit goes a long way. So we're gonna add the garlic salt paste to the cheese and we're going to mix that in well now don't do what i did and don't use a silicon spoon because it gets bendy use a wooden spoon like that one so once it's all mixed in just a taste a little bit and if you don't think it's salty enough we're just going to add salt to taste when it's necessary I'll leave it up to your personal taste. So stir that all back in again. Taste it again. And if you think it needs a little bit more salt. Now I'm adding half a teaspoon at a time. I wouldn't add any more than that. There we go. So I've added in total about three teaspoons of salt. And I've just tasted it there and that's fine. So I'm going to cover that with plastic wrap now and we're going to refrigerate for 30 minutes just to help it firm up for the next step. So while uh, your cheese is in the fridge, we're going to toast the peppercorns in a frying pan over low heat until they change colour. Now it only takes about two minutes for this, so don't get too excited, don't walk away from the stove. And you can see they're brown there, so just pour those into the mortar and pestle and grind until they're medium fine. This took me about 10 minutes. Now the aroma was amazing, the delightful peppery aroma coming out of the mortar and pestle. There you go, that's about the uh, the fineness or the, how ground it should be. It's not quite a powder, but there are some little chunks in there. So pour the ground pepper into a small bowl. And then get your cream cheese, which essentially it is. And we're going to form the cheese into five even sized balls. So it's between the size of a golf ball and a tennis ball. So halfway in between that. I couldn't think of a ball that was in between that size. Anyway, so make the five even sized balls. So it's four and one more. Put a little bit more on that one first. It was a bit small. 
There we go, all done. Gloves really helped with that. Okay, I put a fresh, I just washed those gloves <laughs> with my hands on. Uh, so pour the ground pepper onto a dinner plate, just some of it. Probably about half. And then make sure you've got a board with a mat uh, that's been sanitized, uh, ready to go. There we go, everything in its right place. So roll each cheese in the ground pepper until it is fully coated. So there we go, sprinkle the rest of the pepper in there. Give it a good roll. And that's the last of the pepper, so I think I was a little bit short. Maybe not. That's not a bad job. Got all the pepper on all the cheese balls. So place the cheese balls on a mat and air dry them at room temperature for two days. Now they will change colour from this darker peppery colour to a lighter colour and you'll see that in a minute. So I turned them every six hours. Now they were a bit soft so instead of forming, staying in their ball shape, they kind of went into little squares but that's okay or cubes. No big deal. So this is day two. Just a quick turn. And this is early on in day three. You can see it's totally changed color. The pepper's gone a lot lighter. And this is when you know it's fairly dry. Dry enough to put into the cheese fridge and ripen that at 13 Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for two to six weeks and turn it every two days for even drying. Anyway, back to Gav. So there you have it, fairly easy little cheese to make. Basically you make a cream cheese, add some garlic and salt and then roll it in pepper. Now they're supposed to be ball shaped, but uh, as you can see there, not very ballish because as it was drying, and this one's been drying for about two and a half weeks, uh, it kind of flattened on the bottom. So maybe I didn't uh, drain enough moisture out of the cheese uh, before I put it into the cheese fridge. Now, the good thing about the pepper on the outside is it keeps all the mold off. Now I've had this just sitting in the cheese fridge without any covering over the top. It's been fairly humid in the cheese fridge, about 80%, uh, and it hasn't been in a ripening box whatsoever uh, because I wanted it to dry out as much as I possibly could. So that's what we've done. Anyway, let me cut into it and have a look. So it's fairly firm in the middle, which is fantastic. Uh, good looking little cheese. It's, it's certainly, yeah, it's not, uh, you know, your normal cream cheese consistency. I'll let that dry out a fair bit. I'm gonna let all the others dry out until they go a lot firmer and then normally this is known as a grating cheese. Anyway, let's try a little bit. I've got a lot of pepper on this, so I don't know how peppery she's gonna be. I'll try a little bit without the cracker. It's starting to get um, firm around the edge already, so. Oh, first thing you can taste is not the pepper, it's the garlic. Oh, now the pepper. It's, my goodness, that's strong. Let's try a bit more, shall we? Mm. That is very, very nice. Got the garlic and salt flavor on the inside. It's well salted. So there's enough salt in there, that's for sure. And the pepper all over, oh, absolutely delicious. Oh, fiery little thing, that's for sure. Let's get some of that peppery goodness on me cracker. Well, let me tell you, that is a great little cheese. My mouth is, um, well, fairly on fire at the moment because of all the black pepper. 
but yeah, she's a fiery little one. Great little cheese. Uh, if you get a chance to make it, then please follow the recipe. Uh, and uh, yeah, you won't be disappointed, that's for sure. Like I said, I'm gonna let them harden a little bit more. The other ones are gonna stay in the fridge for a while. So I may do another taste test video in probably two weeks time to see what they're like when they're hard and see if they're actually, you can grate them or not. But nice and firm, beautiful garlic peppery flavor with just the right amount of salt. So that's Belle Pinol. Uh, it's a very lovely little cheese. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and hit that little bell notification so you can get notified of other cheesy content. Now, if you want to buy supplies, then do so over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.